To reduce clutter in your home, I have discovered that it's often the simple rules, habits and actions that can lead to an organized space and improve your living environment. So let's dive into 12 things that will help you create and maintain a more clutter-free home. One minute rule. So essentially, if something takes 60 seconds or less to do, tackle it right away. It's amazing how much mental space you free by just getting those quick tasks done. For example, if the dishwasher has finished its cycle or it's time to take out the laundry, just go ahead and do it now. You can even stretch this to two minutes or whatever amount you want. It's not really that you have to be there with a timer. It's more about recognizing those small tasks and how actually easy it is to do them and then basically just doing them. Always leaving these small tasks undone can just create more stress and a more cluttered environment, which in turn creates even more stress. And then it starts this cycle that you definitely just want to avoid. So when you don't feel like doing these tasks, remind yourself of all the good long-term benefits. And then what's the alternative if you don't get it done? The second hack is to keep the sink clear. In our home, we have this little rule to never place things in the sink after eating. Honestly, I can't remember what was the specific reason why we started this rule or habit. Maybe it was because it makes it more difficult to cook if there's something in the sink and you would like to put something there. But whatever the reason is or was, it has turned out to be a great habit to keep the kitchen more tidy. I think sink is just a place where you put things and you can hide easily things there when you feel lazy and you don't want to like actually take care of them properly. But if there's a rule to not have anything there, then they will end up on the table. And when they are on the table, it's very visual clutter and then they start to bother you. So then you are much more motivated to empty the dishwasher or, and put them there. Or if it's already empty, then to just, of course, put them in the dishwasher. This really helps you to keep the kitchen surfaces clear and clean. Plus, it prevents you to take the easy way out when it comes to keeping things tidy. Number three, take photos. I think most of us have either smartphones or if not that, then some sort of tablet or some device to easily snap pictures of things. We often need to write down information like passwords, phone numbers or things that we just need to do. And these bits of paper, if you write them down on a physical piece of paper, can so easily get lost or forgotten at home. So the hack is instead of always writing things down and having tens or hundreds of these pieces of paper at your home, is to just take a picture of this important information. This way you can keep track of things without having to sort through a lot of things and having to search for things and in general just having a lot of physical mess. And now you might be thinking, well, won't my phone become then just cluttered? And the answer to that is, Maybe yes, maybe over time it will, but at least it's so much easier to like deal with digital clutter than physical clutter, at least for me. It's so much faster, it's easier to go through things. And in general, digital clutter for me creates much less stress than visual, like physical clutter. It only takes a couple of seconds to clear out digital space, so I think that this is much better option. Number four, balanced self-expression. I think it's important to remember that our homes don't have to be just black and white, even if you are a minimalist. They should reflect who we are with personal touches that make the space feel like home to us. However, sometimes the self-expression can get a little bit out of hand and I think it's quite easy to lose sight of where to draw the line between self-expression and then minimalism. So ask yourself, what makes your house feel like a home? And how can you tell the difference between meaningful items and clutter? I think one trick to finding a balance between minimalism and self-expression is to identify the key pieces that truly represent who you are and what you love. Also, if you have a lot of things in your home, consider if there are some items that are expressing or representing the past you. So somebody you were years ago, but not necessarily anymore who you are now today. By keeping this balance in mind, you'll maintain a clutter-free home filled with things that genuinely matter to you. I think this approach not only reduces clutter, but also helps you appreciate all the things that remain and you want to keep in your home. Energy-based decluttering. 
If your goal is to have a clutter-free space, using your own energy levels as a guide can be super helpful. On days when you have a lot of energy, take advantage of this and maybe tackle a bigger decluttering session. You can dedicate more time to that and then relax after it, knowing that you have made a significant progress. On days when your energy levels are low, it's perfectly okay to do smaller tasks. You can do this, for example, during the commercial breaks. If you're watching the TV, just spend a few minutes doing something. I personally like to balance both of these approaches. Sometimes I go for bigger sessions and sometimes I go, go for like really smaller ones that take only a few minutes. It's really based on how I'm feeling that specific Day. Ultimately, doing something is always better than doing nothing at all. Keep it manageable and enjoy the process. Number six, no shoes inside. A little bit controversial one. I know in the US it's very common to keep your shoes on indoors as well as in southern Europe, but in many parts of the world, like in Europe, especially in the Nordic countries, across Asia and almost all Africa, it's a different story. People switch to these indoor shoes like flip-flops or slippers or then they just simply walk around in socks. That's what we do here in Finland and I think in all Nordic countries for the most part. So why do we do this? What's the point? Well, I think it's pretty straightforward. Shoes get dirty when you are outside. So if you go inside with the same shoes, you make your home look quite messy and just dirty. It will be more effort required to clean that. By leaving your outdoor shoes at the entrance, you minimize that mess and keep your home looking fresh and tidy. I personally think that if it's your home, you set the rules. So no matter where you live, you can break the norms if you want to. Like if I didn't care about the cleanliness of the house at all here, somebody could just walk in with the outdoor shoes and why would I care about that? But I do, so that's why I don't want people to do that. By the way, if you know why some cultures embrace this um, shoes on culture inside and some cultures really see it as rude, let me know in the comment section below. I would like to know. Number seven, end of day desktop clear off. Whether you're working from home or have a dedicated desk at work, keeping your space organized can significantly improve your focus and this feeling that you are in control the next day. Even if your workspace stays clean throughout the day, I think it's a good idea to reset it in the evening or afternoon whenever you finish working. This means removing anything that you need it today, but you will not need any more tomorrow. Starting the next day with a clear desk allows you to focus on new tasks without any more dwelling on yesterday's work. It's like giving yourself a fresh start. And I also feel that it gives me this sense of closure at the end of the day when I just tidy up my desk and then move on. That's it, time to do something else. It's really simple, but I think it can make a big difference in the long run. Number eight, back cleanup routine. Every time I come home, no matter where I have been, whether it's a long trip or a quick visit to the library or a workout at the gym, I unpack and clear out my bag right away. I don't just toss it aside and move on to do other things or take a shower. I usually take out everything, put the dirty clothes in the laundry basket and return other items in their proper places. This habit not only helps to keep the space tidy, but also it prevents to lose things. So basically forgetting that they are still in the bag and also deal with the dirty and sweaty clothes so that they don't just hang around in there, but they get cleaned as soon as possible. I have found this routine to be super helpful and I find it quite difficult to understand some people who come back from trips and leave their bags for days or even weeks completely untouched. For me, that would create so much more stress that it's just I see it there and I know I should take care of it I should deal with it but I'm not than if I just did it like when I'm coming back even if I was feeling a little bit tired number nine weekly cleaning session I mentioned before to have tidying up sessions based on your energy levels but I suggest having at least one longer cleaning session every week on a day when you know that you have more time and energy. During this session, the idea is to tackle those areas that you know require more attention and maybe you cannot do during a normal weekday. So aim for a weekly session where you go beyond just tidying up. You can consider this as a mini deep, deep cleaning where you assess 
what needs more work and then actually clean spaces thoroughly. Number 10, do the dishes straight after meals. Whether it's a dinner or a lunch, I think tackling the dishes immediately is a really good habit. For instance, today before starting to film, I cooked and ate lunch and instead of leaving all the mess for later, I cleaned it up right away. This habit keeps the kitchen looking clean and clutter free and also frees up the mental space since you don't have to worry about doing that thing later. It's also an important thing to do if you live with family members or you have some roommates and they are cooking their own food. I actually picked this habit up while I was living with a lot of people and I think it was just, you know, a nice rule to have when you are living with people. But now I'm sticking with it because I know that there are other benefits as well. I think this approach is much better than having dishes waiting you the next morning when you wake up and you go to the kitchen, you're like, my God, now I have to start the day with this. It's much better feeling if you know that everything is already handled and you can start the day doing, I don't know, some nicer things, I guess. 11, immediate mail management. When I get any mail, any letters, I immediately open them and I deal with them. If there are bills, I will pay them. If it's just some junk mail, I will just throw it in the recycling bin. In general, I try to avoid letting the mail to pile up on my table for multiple days. So I just take care of it immediately. Now this weekend or week, I kind of was reminded of this and why I wanted to include it in this video as well, that it can cause unnecessary stress if you don't deal with it. I usually don't like to do any work stuff during the weekend. I got this bill, I think on Friday, and I realized that, okay, it's something related to my business activities. And then I was like, well, I'm not gonna do it now. I will do it on Monday. And now the bill was there all weekend on my table, the dining table. And I was looking at it. I was just seeing it. I was like, no, not gonna do it. But it was taking a lot of like mental space there. And it would have been just so much smarter to deal with it, get rid of it. And just, you know, it would take in three minutes, but now it took much, much more like from my head. And now today when I actually paid it, now I don't have to think about it anymore. And now I feel so much better. Of course, I could have find a spot where to hide it, you know, for the weekend, but then I'm sure I wouldn't have any more found it today when I actually needed to pay it. So it was a really good reminder for me to just take care of things immediately rather than postponing them, even if I have certain rules, rules for myself. If it takes 60 seconds, again, like in this case as well, just do it. Number 12, mindful purchasing. The less stuff you have at home, the easier it is to keep your space clutter free. If you have been following me for some time, you know that I talk about this a lot on this channel. So when you are at the store, think carefully about your purchases. Ask yourself, what do you really need? And what can you live without? By doing this, you will reduce the impulse purchases, save yourself from unnecessary clutter, and also save space in your home for things that actually matter to you. If you would like a lot more ideas or habits to keep your home clutter free, check out this video next. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to stay kind and meaningful in your own beautiful journey. See you in the next one.